Hey guys, Emily here again for the second installment of our interview series. Today I'm talking with Teresa, a girl who played rec soccer with Rose in the Santan League. Uh, hey. First, I want to start with how your experience has been so far. I know you've been talked to by a lot of people about this, and I wanted to say thank you for taking more time out of your schedule to talk to us. It's cool. I don't know how many other people they talk to, but I guess that one picture of Rose they keep using in the newsreels is the one of me and her from practice a few months back. So people started sending me emails about interviews. I don't mind them too much, but I might have to change my home phone number soon. Well, we won't take too much of your time. I just wanted to get a few questions out there, if you can elaborate on them. Uh, sure, yeah, whatever I can help with. Well, first things first. As you know, we're an independent media outlet looking into Rose's disappearance. I thought you guys were like a mystery-solving podcast. We are. That's just technical terminology. But the point is, we're not controlled by any kind of studio or broadcast contract, and the internet is still a free-range place. So feel free to speak your mind about anything that comes up. Got it. First question, how long did you know Rose? Um, probably five years. We started in Santan together when we were in middle school. We didn't always play on the same team, but we knew each other. Last couple of years, we've been making the same team. I play center and she's the center mid, and I kind of depend on her a lot in games, so we're pretty good friends. Depend on her? It's a soccer thing. I'm right-handed, so that's my power side. The mid basically has a job of feeding the ball to the forwards, and she's always the best at setting up shots for me. You guys have a good relationship off the field? Yeah, um, we hung out every once in a while and we carpooled the games a lot when she got her license first. How would you describe her? She gets this like super determined face when she plays games. She goes in total competitive mode. She's a beast on the field and can get a little rough. Total sportsman though, shakes hands and helps people off. And off the field, she's just a really nice person. She tried to get me to go out hiking with her a few times. Inclusive? Oh, for sure. You'd have to be to handle working at a summer camp. I could never. We learned from our last interviewee that her behavior was somewhat out of character in the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I mean, she was going through some stuff. Can you elaborate? Well, personal things. Like? I know she was frustrated with school. Jen mentioned her parents were pushing her to go for a pre-med degree and she wanted to study environmental sciences up in Colorado. Yeah, she mentioned that once or twice. And I mean, I guess it's kind of public now. It's not like Rose was hiding it, but her parents are kind of getting a divorce. Oh. Yeah, it had her tweaked out for the first few weeks, and then she sort of just got quiet about it. Whenever she was on the bench, she'd just be shoving her face in these weird books. Did they have anything to do with the Superstition Mountains? Yeah. You know about the Lost Dutchman's gold mine? Duh. And yeah, that was on the cover of these books, too. I asked her about it eventually. And? She was sort of cagey about it at first, but then she just started getting excited over it and rattled off all this stuff about trails and clues and some guy who was helping her look for it. She was looking for the mine? I think so. Not like a full-on expedition, but what teenager around here hasn't at least thought about it? you know? But she seemed serious about it. Yeah. She was very wrapped up in it. I think it was a coping mechanism for her with school and home stuff. But, well, never mind. No, go for it. I just, I don't want to, I wasn't really a huge fan of the things I was hearing about this dude she knew in Tortilla Flat. Why? He sounded intense. And he started picking her up from practice, and then she started skipping, and then she just got kind of quiet and depressed. That'd be enough to set anyone on edge. Yeah, so I wasn't really into this guy. But I only saw him from far away a few times. Then she stopped showing up to practice, and then I saw her on the news. I see. Well, I'm sorry for the stress of it all. And losing a friend like that must be hard. It sucks. It really does. Which is why I keep doing these interviews, because I hope it helps. This did, for sure. Have you talked to anyone else about this guy? Uh, not really. It never comes up. People just want, like, a character profile of her. 
And last time I saw Rose was like two weeks before she disappeared. So the cops never questioned me. Well, we may have something here. Thank you so much for your time, Teresa. No problem. This is Emily signing off another interview. Check our updates for more info.